Hello everyone, welcome to what if Remuru was the fifth true dragon of the void and goes to high school dxd part 2. Before we start please go support Andrews Fernando 1 in the black for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. The Storm Dragon Voldora. Hello people from the other side I am the Storm Dragon Voldora, and I'm currently trapped in an infinity prison that was placed by that hero from 300 years ago, and I've been stuck in here ever since. I had tried countless times breaking out from my imprisonment, but it's pointless, nothing I can do seems to pierce it. Voldora. I'm so bored, there's nothing here for me to do. When would this suffering ever end I have been here for over 300 years, and I am so lonely cursed that hero for imprisoning the store dragon Voldora in this internal boredom. I yelled so loudly that my yell echo around the cave, but even so, there is no one here to hear my complaint, not even having anyone to talk to. It's just so depressing and it's driving me crazy. I suddenly got surprised when I heard footsteps that was coming this way, meaning someone is here. Voldora. Yes I'm finally having company over, all right stay calm Voldora act like the mighty feared storm dragon you are. I tried to make myself look intimidating and majestic as I can, waiting for the person that I'm about to meet. As I got a good view on the person that seems to be a woman or at least I think it's a woman with long flowing blue hair and golden eyes, and for some reason I feel like I have seen those eyes before, but where have I seen them? So are you just going to keep staring at me or are you just gonna say hello? I was so distracted that I snap back to reality and just say hello to the human. Voldora. Hello human what are you doing here? And hello to you as well Voldora. It has been so long since the last time I saw you. Voldora. Last time? Have I met this person before? I was confused if this person and I know each other I just need to ask questions. Voldora. Who are you and where did you come from? Oh are you sure you want to ask that question? Voldora. Uh, yes. Alright fine I'll tell you. Well you see when a man and a woman loves each other so much they. Voldora. That's not what I meant what I meant to say is how did you get here. I teleported myself here, and I sensed the flow of magicules around that let me to find you. Seriously Voldora do you really not recognize my human form? I was hoping you would have known by now. I was really more confused that this person is not even human than who even is this person. Sigh Valdora, how could you not remember your own big brother who look after you when you were being picked on by your two older sisters? Took a closer look at that person till my eyes widen as I remember a memory from my past. Flashback, you can see a little Valdora who is being chased by his two older sisters Velzard and Velgrind, as he been trying to get away from them. Velgrind. Come back here Valdora we just wanna play with you. Velzard. Yes, now please stop running dear brother, so we can puny I mean play with you with your big sisters. Valdora. No leave me alone big brother please save me from them. Ermuru. Now now you two don't be rough on him. All three true dragon siblings seize their older brother Ermuru, as Valdora flies towards him and being held by him in his arms. Ermuru. You two should not be bullying your brother, even if he cause a little bit trouble he is still your little brother. Velzard. But big brother we were just showing our loving affection toward our little brother. Ermuru. Oh really? I did hear you almost saying you were gonna punish him, so is that really how you show your affection towards your siblings, Velzard? She looked slightly embarrassed as giggles escaped from Velgrin's mouth, and for Voldora was laughing at Velzard which she was having a tick mark from her little brother. Voldora. Kuahahaha you're in big trouble now sister you're getting scolded by big brother and you can't lay a finger at me kuahahaha. An icy cold smile and a cold glare from Valzard made Voldora flinch, that got him to shut him up. Flashback end. Voldora. Big brother Remuru it's really you yes been forever since I've seen you. Remuru. Ah so now you remember, glad to know little brother. It's great to see you again and you seem to have not changed a bit. You're still the unmatured little brother you always been. Voldora. Hey I am very mature and I had changed to be a very noble dragon, that people worship me as their god and savior. Ermuru. Really now, then tell me this, what have I been hearing about you destroying a city, burning down villages, and you being defeated by a hero who imprisoned you in infinity prison for 300 years, how are you can explain to yourself huh? This made Voldora speechless, he was feeling nervous if his brother was going to punish him just like how his sisters punish him, but worst. Ermuru. Look Voldora I only came here for two reasons, one, you've been stuck here for 300 years, and it must be really boring and two, there are some special people that would like to meet you in person. Voldora. Wait are you gonna be sending me free? His eyes light up, in hopes of finally being free from his boredom of torture. Ermuru. That's right, but you will be staying in my imaginary space, and I'll be leaving some stuff for you to pass time, are you okay with that? Voldora. Kuahahaha if big brother says so, then I must follow your word. Ermuru. Alright seal, release my brother from his imprisonment. Seal. It shall be done, master. I just one touch from the barrier it was destroy, freeing Voldora from the unlimited imprisonment in the process, and he was glad that he was finally free. Ermuru. Alright since you're finally free there are some people that I want you to meet. 
Baldora tilting his head in confusion but then saw Tiamat, Falfa and Shalsha made themselves known. Vildora had a questionable look of who are they and how come he didn't know since then. But he became a shock of what came out of Falfa's mouth. Falfa? Wow it's really Uncle Vildora he looks really cool. Shalsha? Yes yes sister Uncle Vildora looks super cool. Vildora? A. Hey, you uncle. Did I heard that correctly or did those children just call me uncle? The response he got was Ramuru chuckling and he just answered. Ramuru. Indeed they call you uncle, and that is because they're my daughters which means they are your nieces and the woman right there is my wife Tiamat who's a dragon like us. This was really shocking for Vildora that he has two new nieces and his older brother has a wife, he was feeling happy for his brother. Vildora. Kuahahaha this is an amazing news to know that I have two new nieces and they even call me cool. Me, their uncle the storm dragon Vildora, uncle Vildora I shall be Kuahahaha doesn't sound too bad I would say. Ramuru. He seems to take this very lightly. Diamat. Your brother seems to be boisterous and excitable has he always been like this? Ramuru. Well he always been like this since he came to existence, even my brother Veldanava, but at least he did mature, unlike this one. They turned to Voldora who seemed to be playing with the twins, which made Ramuru smile seeing this scene. Time skip brought to you by. After getting along with his other brother's family Voldora got named to Voldora Tempest, and he was now in the imaginary space with some manga for him to enjoy. While he's enjoying reading manga or sacred text he calls it he heard a voice he does not recognize. Stephen when did you get so fat? He stopped reading the sacred text and turned for the voice came from only to see a giant screen TV and someone sitting on a chair, throwing a controller in frustration. Emotional damage who the hell even came up with this stupid game, it's so damn hard. Vildora. Uh, hello. Huh? The person turns around to see Vildora who got a good look at the person to be a child with horns on her head and a collar on around her neck. Who are you? What are you doing in my swamp? Vildora. Huh? Swamp. But this place doesn't look like a swamp. I call it whatever I want. So answer why you're doing here dragon or death by pie. Vildora. What nonsense is this child saying? Such disrespect towards me and I cannot be talked down by a mere child. Vildora. I don't know who you are, but you are talking to the great storm dragon Vildora Tempest, kneel before my presence kuahahaha. Who? Vildora just deadpan, blinking a couple times and just just stare at the child who had a uncaring face. Vildora. The storm dragon Vildora. Legendary dragon. Come on you should know about me. Never heard of you. Vildora. Sigh my big brother is Ramuru. Oh you're related to Ramuru why didn't you say so? Vildora. I'm guessing you know for him, child. I am not a child I'm a grown up I'm Lapless Darkness, a name that was given to me by my master Ramuru, but before I was named by my master, I used to be known as. 666, Trahiksa. Meeting the goblins and the Deerolves. After sending my brother Vildora to my imaginary space my family and I began exploring the cave just having ourselves an adventure, fighting some monsters like a Tempest Serpent, Armorsaurus, Evil Intipid, Black Spider and some others that we easily killed, and I have been teaching my daughters how to use each of the monster skills. I did found Hippocrat herbs, according to Seal, they are valuable rare herbs that are the raw ingredient for making healing potions, and I decided to take all of them even taking all of the magic ore since they seem rare. That could be benefit in the future, but also because my daughters find them very pretty, so I make necklace for them and for Tiamat as well who appreciate it by giving me a kiss for the gift I gave her. After a while we were done exploring the cave I teleported us out of the cave and began walking through the forest. Alpha. That was so much fun look what I can do. Alpha used the body armor skill on her right arm she got from the Armorsaurus. Alpha. This is so cool. Shalsha. Agree sister. I'm getting a hang of using the skill from the black spider. Shalsha, using sticky thread was making shapes of a cradle, a diamond, a hand drum, a boat and the Tokyo Tower. Tiamat and I were amazed by this and I could have been more proud. We suddenly heard the sound of footsteps approaching and we looked to see a group of weak looking goblets stand before us. Ramuru. Weak scrawny goblins. I wonder what they want with us, and I hope they are not like those other ones. Seal. You do not have to worry about these goblins they are peaceful, unlike those disgusting vermins from that other world we visit. You should probably help them with their problem and making them as your subordinates. Ramuru. Alright I'll help them whatever problem they need. You know if a certain goblin slaying madman was here he would probably won't hesitate killing these goblins, and they're lucky they have not encountered him. One of the goblins with a red head scarf spoke to us nervously. Goblin. Strong ones, do you have business here? Alpha? Strong ones. Does he mean us? Shalsha? It seems so. Ramuru? Oh it's nothing we were just walking around through the forest, is there something you guys need? Goblin? Oh great one please help us in our dire of need. Ramuru? Sure thing. You guys can lead us to your village and we can help with your problem. We followed the goblins where are they taken us to their village. When we arrive at the village we met the elder. Ramuru? 
Huh, never expected I will get to meet Yoda, but he seemed to have not aged well. Elder Goblin. Welcome to our humble town visitors, I am the elder of this village. Remuru. Hello nice to meet you, I'm Remuru and this is my wife Tiamat. Tiamat. Hello, thank you for welcoming us to your village. Remuru. And those two over there are my daughters Falfa, Shalsha. Falfa Shalsha. Hello there. Remuru. So what is it do you need help for? Elder Goblin. Well if you perhaps notice of many of the monsters have been usually active of late. Remuru. No, not really. We haven't noticed that. Elder Goblin. Our god Voldora disappeared. As a result, monsters in the area have been constantly harassing us. Remuru. So Voldora was kidding when he said that he was being worshipped as a god. Well I'll be taking his responsibility by helping these goblets out. Elder Goblin. The deer elves have been attacking us and we tried to fight them off, but we lack in numbers. Goblin. So we hoped you would. Remuru. Help you. Well you're in luck cause gonna be helping you guys out. Elder Goblin. Why you will. Remuru. Yes, but in return you will all become my loyal subordinates and be granted my protection. Elder Goblin. We will gladly be in your service. After accepting my proposal the elder takes us where the wounded goblins were at. Goblin 1. It hurts it hurts everywhere, but I can't feel my legs. Goblin 2. My leg my leg. Goblin 3. When will this suffering ever ends? Elder Goblin. We did everything we care for them, but. Remuru. Don't worry, I can fix that, no problem. I made a bunch of healing potions appeared, and I throw one at one wounded goblin, and his injuries were completely healed, shocking the elder and the rest that were watching. Remuru. Get these to the wounded, and their injuries will be healed good as new. Elder Goblin. As you command Remuru Sama, I'm skip brought to you by two high-ranking demons Akaza and Doma we're chasing after Zenitsu who's running for his life. He then see Tanjiro inside in a cell who notice him coming this way. Tanjiro, let me out let me out, Zenitsu, let me in let me in. He let himself in the cell, now they were being stare at the demons that were planning to eat them. Zenitsu? Please don't eat me, Inasuke. Drop him. They all turn to see Inasuke has arrived to the rescue. The Kaza. Hey, who's the pig? Inasuke. Are you talking to me? Zenitsu? He called him a pig. Inasuke. Are you talking to me? Zenitsu? Shouldn't have done that. Inasuke. Are talking to me? Zenitsu? Now they're in for it. Inasuke. They call me Mr. Pig Ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
I went to my tent with Tiamat besides me as we were laying together. Naming can be tiresome, but at least Tiamat is here to comfort me as we were stare at each other's eyes, lovely Lee and we were about to kiss, that was until. Seal. Master you are receiving a call from your mother-in-law. I got surprised by this which Tiamat noticed my reaction. Tiamat. Something wrong darling. Ermuru. Your mother is calling. She was annoyed that her mother called at the worst moment while in my head, Seal was smirking. I pull out a crystal ball from my imaginary space, and their image of Namu appeared as she was waving at us from the other side. Namu. Hello Rimuru and Tiamat I'm happy to contacting you both, as it's been weeks that I get to see your faces, Tiamat. Hello mother it's lovely to see you, but you seem to have called at the worst of time. Namu. Oh what's wrong Tia? You don't seem too happy to see me. Did I interrupt you both in the middle of mating? She grinned once she saw Tiamat's cheeks red, and she turns away not making eye contact to her mother. Namu. R if that was the case I apologize for interrupting you both I'll try to be careful the next time I call. Anyways where are my adorable granddaughters? Ermuru. They are currently playing right now. So they're not available as of right now. Namu. Oh I see. Well tell them that their grandmother loved them so much. I have news to inform you and it's about the Gremory brat. I got serious when she mentioned about Gremory. Ermuru. You don't say, what about her? Namu. She was challenged in a raiding game by the third son of the Phoenix family, Riser Phoenix, and if she lose by him, she'll be forced to marry him. I have heard rumors that Riser is a womanizer and also a pervert. Ermuru. Is that so? Well it's not really my problem. I can see why Rhea she was trying to get me to her peerage even go as far trying to kidnap Falfa and Shalsha cause she was desperate just to get out of that engagement of hers. Honestly I don't care what happens to her cause what she was trying to do was unforgivable. She needs to solve the problem of hers for herself, and besides, she does have Red Dragon Emperor to her peerage to beat the Trizer guy. Namu. Even so, I don't think Grimory would win the fight against her opponent she is facing, but that's just my opinion. Either way it was lovely speaking with you I'll contact you both later when something else happens. Ermuru. Great talking to you Namu. Tiamat. Goodbye mother. Namu. See you later Tia. Just hope the next time I call I won't interrupting you two of making a third grandchild. Tiamat. Shut up mother. Namu. Haha <laughs> bye bye. She ended the call, and I placed the crystal ball back to my imaginary space. Tiamat was rubbing her temples from the annoying tease for her mother. Tiamat. I swear that woman is getting in my nerves. Ermuru. Well she is your mother after all, and she just like to keep on teasing you, that's basically what all mothers do to their children. She let out a sigh and laid her head to my shoulder, her eyes look up to me as she was giving me an adorable look. Tiamat. I'm glad that I met you and if you didn't show up in the familiar forest years ago, I wouldn't have the family I have right now I always brings me joy and happiness. I couldn't help but smile at her, and I grabbed her chin and poured her to kiss which lasted for minutes. As soon as we were done kissing we went to check on Falfa and Shalsha to see how they're doing. What we saw they were petting Ranga and by looking at him he seems to enjoy the treatment he's getting. Ramiru Tiamat. Cute. Morgan. The next day came the goblins and the deer olds have completely changed, during from me naming them they have evolved. The male goblins evolve into Hobgoblin, and the female goblins evolve to Goblina, and I named the elder Rigard and his son Rigor, for the deer olds have evolved to Tempest Wolf, and their appearance may not have a change, but Range has. Now having a horn on his forehead and grow a bit taller, he can even changing his size any way he wants. After gathering everyone I set up three rules for them to follow at all costs. Rule number one, no fighting amongst each other, rule number two, no belittling other races, and rule number three is the most important one, no attacking humans unless in self-defense or being provoked. Everyone were assigned to do their routines, but the goblins are not really good at building houses. But I was told there was a dwarf kingdom called Armed Nation of Dwargan that can help us solve the problem, so we'll be going there to recruit people to help us out. Ermuru. Okay, we'll try going to Dwargan. Falfa, Shalsha, look after everyone while your mother and I are gone. And Rigard you as well look after the village while we're gone. Falfa. You got it papa. Shalsha. We'll keep everyone safe, you can count on us. Rigard. Yes, sir leave everything to me I'll protect everyone with my muscles. Oh yeah I forgot to mention Rigard basically became so jacked up. Anyway it was time for us to head off. Ermuru. Mushroom Kingdom, here we come. Take 2. Ermuru. Armed Nation of Dwargan, here we come. Time skip with words of wisdom, brought to you by Don Mamadro. We have arrived at Dwargan. The goblins that came with us stay behind with their Tempest Wolf and Tiamat, and I reach the city gates while Ranga is in my shadow. While we were waiting in line two goons showed up looking at us. I viciously glare at them as they were looking at Tiamat with those dirty looks at theirs. Ermuru. The hell do you two want? Man 1. Hey there ladies you both look quite hexy. Man 2. You both are fine looking women we ever see. How about come with us and give you both a good time. 
This made the both of us angry and what's more these bastards call me a woman. This infuriates me that they're trying to make moves on Tiamat and I won't be showing any mercy on them. Tiamat. We refuse to come with you as we have business to attend to. So you and your friend better get the hell out of our sight because one thing can lead to another and that can lead to your deaths you disgusting pigs. Man 1. How what the hell did you just say to us bitch, you're gonna regret saying that to us we might as well have to take you by force. The guy brought out a knife and about to attack her, but his hand was grab and a very tightly grip which it was hurting him. He turned to me as my eyes were glowing brightly, staring at the man's soul while holding his hand even tighter. Ramuru. Don't you dare touch my wife you son of a bitch or I may as well ripped off your arm and shove it right through your ass. The guy and his buddies were scared and people were watching this the scene. Man 1. D did why you say wife. Ramuru. Yeah I did. Also I'm a dude, dude. I lifted the guy up and with a powerful throw he crashed with his friend along with their lackeys. I calmed myself down people were looking at me and Tiamat wrapped her arms around me in a hog and cuddling with my face. Soon after a guard showed up wondering what was all the commotion about. Guard. What is going on here? The guards look at the mess that I caused as the throw I did made a large trail destroy everything at its path and I nervously sweat for not holding back a bit. Ramuru. Seal, those people that I have throw are they dead by any chance? Seal. Answer. They have luckily live, unfortunately. They had just fainted, having broken bones and have soiled themselves. Ramuru. Well at least I think killed anyone or else I'll get in trouble, though. Guard. Hey you there. The guards approached us and I was feeling nervous what to say. Ramuru. Eh what's up, doc? Guard. What's up doc? I'll tell you what's up, are you the one who caused all this mess? Ramuru. Well. I explained to the guards that me and wife were being harassed by those men and I did what I did in self-defense. They asked the people that witnessed what had happened and luckily we were only given a warning and we finally entered Worgen. We decided to stroll around the city. The place seems impressive but not much as advanced from the other world. About an hour pass we saw the same the guard from before seems to have a look of trouble and worry. Ramuru. Excuse me sir is there a problem? Guard. Oh is you two again, I'm just worried about my brothers they were caught in an accident deep in the mind of gathering orbs and badly hurt. Diamat. Do you have potions to heal them? Guard. Sadly we don't. Diamat. Well you're in luck. My darling Rimuru can help you with that problem. Bard lift his head up and having a shipper of hope in his eyes. Bard. He can. But how? I summoned a barrel of healing potion and gave it to the guard. Rimuru. The blue liquid in the barrel are a special healing potion. Give these to your friends and their wounds will be healed. He took the barrel and left to take it to his friends. It's been a while and he returned, but with three people that are his friends. The guard named Kaidu he thanked me for saving his friends that are like his brothers. I asked Kaidu we're looking for a good blacksmith for our village. He took us to a place to meet famous blacksmith named Kajin who's his older brother. As we entered the workshop to see Kajin working on a weapon. Kajin. Ah oh, excuse me, what can I do for you? Ramuru. You see, I am Ramuru Tempest and my wife and I came here to ask a favor of you. He raised a brow then I explained to him why we came here. He tell me he was given a command by some minister to make 20 magic swords, immediately I made 20 magic swords which shocked him and was even more shocked of seeing the quality of the swords. Ermuru. So, do we have a deal? He turned to the sword and to me back and forth, he smiled and raised his hand for a handshake. Hajin. You got yourself a deal. We both shook hands as this was the start of a partnership. He first needed to inform the king that he will be leaving, apparently he's an old friend of the king of Dwargan, and I asked to come on to meet him. We were now in the king throne room and they are we see, sitting on his throne, the king of Dwargan, hero king, Gazel Dwargo. Basil. Is that so very well I'll respect your decision Cajun, do hope you can come back and visit sometimes. Cajun kneeled down to the king in respect. Cajun. I will your majesty. The king then turned to me. Basil. I trust you treat Cajun well, if there's anything you need I'll help support you in the near future. Ramuru. That will be lovely your majesty. Cajun and his three brothers will be in good hands. But that we left the throne room and departing from Dwargan, heading back home to the village. Vesta. So the failure has finally left, good riddance he was just nuisance along with that commenter. Basil. Silence Vesta I would like to have a word with you. Vesta was feeling afraid from the overwhelming hero hockey he's releasing. Ramuru's Pav. We see the fifth true dragon of the void himself Ramuru Tempest was now standing on the field of a stadium, wearing his true dragon outfit attire. He was just standing there waiting for an old acquaintance of his to arrive, that's where he felt presence of the person he was waiting for. He turned around to see the person as he grins of seeing him. Ramuru. Took you long enough. I have been waiting for you to arrive and I'm glad you took my invitation to come and see me. It has been so long since we last seen each other and I can sense that your strength has increased tremendously, old friend. Ramuru. Indeed it has. 
After crossing different dimensions I had gotten much stronger than I was before. I can pretty much guess that this battle will be different than the last we fought all those years ago, and it makes me quite exciting which of us will actually can finally win. Ramuru. I already know which of us will win, but this time it will not be a draw. You will now see the new power I attain, that was once belonged to a demon king, known for as the master of time and space, now you will be the first person to witness me using this power. Ramuru. Anos Voldigat. The man that Remuru he's speaking to is none other than the demon king of tyranny himself Anos Voldigat, Remuru's longtime rival and one of his closest friends. Anos. I'm looking forward to it. Now then, show me, show me that new power of yours you speak of, my rival. Don't try to keep me waiting otherwise I might as well have to start off our battle. Remuru smiled at Anos and he decided it was time as he took out something that would turn the ties on his favors. Curious, Anos was wondering what his rival was holding and what can it do, but he's about to find out. Not wanted to keep this rival waiting Ramuro pressed the top button of the golden watch. Brands Io, the belt appear from his waist, then attaches the golden watch to it. All of a sudden 20 armored figures appeared start to rise up from the ground all standing beside him. Advent complete turn up change beetle sword form, wake up came and ride, cyclone joker taka tora bata 321 shabadubi couch company henshin soya drive kagan level up best match rider time, Ramuro. Henshin. As the transformation begins and at the same time orchestral rock music starts playing. Brand Time, Huga, Ejido, Ryuki, Faze, Blada Hibiki, Kabuto, Deno, Kiva, Dika de W004's Wizard, Game, Drive Ghost X8 Build Iwi Kamen Rider, Grand Zio. The sight of seeing this form made Anos feel impressed by the power radiate out of it. Suddenly black smoke came out from Ramuru as the smoke form into a clone of him, but with red eyes, this was Seal as she was standing beside her master. Seal. I why he is the heir to all riders, attaining his newest power he is the king of time. His name is Cayman Rider Grand Zio, who's also my beloved master Remuru Tempest Behold, and be honored in his presence. The sound of clapping could be heard as the one was Anos as he stopped clapping then said. Anos. Color me impressed I would say. That was quite the show you put on. But let's see if you can really defeat me in that form of yours, and I want to see how strong you really have become, Void Dragon. Remuru. I'll show you my new strength as a king and the supreme being of worlds. Let this be our final battle as rivals and proof which of us are the strongest beings in the universe. The both of them flare up their aura as this cause everything around them to shake or being destroyed. Well Seal was far away from them as she was rooting for Remuru to win. Seal. Beat a master show him that you're the strongest and you're much more attractive kick his ass my love. Both Remuru and Anos were ready to clash at each other as this battle will be tall in legends, it will be a battle remember for the ages. The battle of two powerful beings, a true dragon and a demon king, the fifth true dragon of the void and the demon king of tyranny, both rifles, will finally have their final match. They were about to start their battle and just when they were about to begin. Alpha Shalsha. Papa wake up, Remuru. Huh. Immediately opening his eyes Remuru looks that he is back at the tent at the goblin village, laying next to him is Tiamat who just woke up minutes ago. He then turns to his two daughters that woke him up from the dream he just had. Remuru. So that was just a dream? It did actually felt real, probably one of the strangest dreams I ever had, last one was me having a tea party with Azathoth and Shub Nigirath. Hey Seal you would have anything to do with the dream I just had. Seal. I don't know what you're talking about master it's probably just your imagination. Remuru. I doubt that. Diamat. Darling. I turned to my Tiamat, seeing that she had a look of worry. Diamat. Are you feeling alright? The kids tried to wake you up. Alpha. Yeah, we keep calling you to wake up, we even tried slapping your face a couple times, but that didn't seem to work. Remuru. Wait what did you say about slapping my face? Shalsha. Did you had a nightmare? Remuru. Not really I just had a strange dream of seeing an old friend of mine who I do consider as my rival. Alpha and Shalsha look curious, well Tiamat raises a brow as I have never told her about Anos, and they wanted to ask questions, but I said I'll tell them about that for another day. Shizu, it's been a week since Kajin and his three brothers joined our village and they got to work, teaching the goblins with their crafting skills to make better tools, weapons, better clothing, integrating craftsmanship and making houses. The Ahmad and I were observing the development of the village, meanwhile Falfa and Shalsha are currently training the other goblin kids how to fight, and they were kicking their asses, not giving them a break. Falfa. Come on guys you need to push the pace or you won't get strong when you ever facing someone stronger than you. Opta. Easy for you to say. You two are too strong for us to handle, and we've been doing this for hours without catching a break. Can we at least have a minute to rest my body feels sore. Babta is one of the goblins I have named, but after his evolution he didn't seem to change, he still looks the same which was strange same goes for his friend Gobzo. Shalsha. There won't be any breaks not until one of you can manage to land one hit to either one of us. Babta. 
That seems rather impossible for us you two keep on beating our butts and not giving us a chance to fight back. Shalsha. Well you just have to try hard enough as all of you need to be improved with our strict training. By the way, Gopta. Gopta? Yeah. Shalsha. Dodge. He didn't have time to react with Falfa delivers a dropkick sending him crashing to all the ground. He looked to see Shalsha's gaze which he was frightened as she was giving him a cold look of disappointment. Shalsha. You were supposed to dodge and you failed to do so. I might as well have to increase your training. Opta. No, please no have mercy on me. Shalsha. Sorry, I'm out of mercy. Shalsha suddenly felt a hand on her shoulder and turned to see me as I smile at her. Ramuru. I think that's enough training for today. You can all take a rest now. Goblin kids. Thank you Lord Ramuru. They were all relieved that they can finally take a rest from the harsh training they had to endure. Ramuru. As for you two, your mother wants to have a word with you both. Without warning Tiamat appear behind them, and she pinched both of their cheeks. Alpha. Ow 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 mama that hurts. Shalsha. Please stop pinching us mama. She released them, both rubbed their cheeks where they were pinch. Then they both look at their mother who have her arms crossed and staring at them with a stern glare which they were shaking in fear. Tiamat. Don't be mean to the other kids or I will have to punish you both severely. Alpha Shalsha. No please don't punish us mama we won't do it again. The both of them have their heads down and begging to not be punished. They both soon felt a hand on their cheeks where they were pitch as they see their mother gently rubbing them, having a motherly concerned look on face. Diamat. As much that I should punish you both, I let this one slide, not because I'm your mother, I just don't have the heart to do so. Be at your best behavior you two or if I catch you both bully anyone there won't be any manga for you both for a month. Hearing they will not be having any manga for a month, the twins expressed a look of shock on their face. Both nodded her as she been patted their heads. Ramuru. That was quite evil of you, telling them they won't be having any manga for a month, I felt really bad for them. Diamat. Sigh they may be my daughters and I love them so much, but I have to discipline them, cause spoiling them too much will be a bad influence on them. Ramuru. Yeah, reminds me of a certain Redeed who must not be named. As well as another Redeed who is just bitch. Rigard. Ramuru Sama, Tiamat Sama. Rigard rushed to approach us. Ramuru. Oh Rigard, is there something wrong? Rigard. Yes, sir we received a message from Rigor and the security team. It seems they've discovered suspicious beings in the forest. Tiamat. Monster. Rigard. No, humans. Ramuru Tiamat. Humans. Rigard. They may be scouts from some nation hoping to expand its dominion. Ramuru. Hmm this could be troubling. I will investigate to know what these humans are doing here. Rigard. Are you sure my lord? You don't need any escorts to come with you. Ramuru. No need Rigard, I'll be fine on my own. Seal. Master. Ramuru. Ah Seal, you've been awfully quiet as of lately. Seal. Apologies for not speaking to you, but there's something important I need to inform you about. This got me curious as of what Seal wants to tell me. Meanwhile, Havel. When I said I have ants on my pants it wasn't a summoning spell. Erin. Could you shut up and at least kill one? Ido. Funny you should say that's literally the reason why we're in this mess. Shizu. In the middle of the forest there are three adventurers named Kaval, Eren, Gido, and there was also this masked girl with them named Shizu. They are being chased by giant ants and running for their lives. Gido. This is your fault, Kaval you just had to stab a giant ant nest with your sword. Kaval. Shut up don't complain about your leader, Eren. For a leader, you're way too careless if I die, swear I'll come back to haunt you. Kaval. That's not even possible because I'm dying with you. Shizu stop running and face the giant ants. Eren. Shizu-san. Kaval. Don't. She draws out her blade from its scabbard. She engulfs the blade with flames as the incoming giant ants all coming towards to attack Shizu. She holds her sword in front her in revenge grip and launched a burst of flames at the giant insects, cooking scorching three of the six ants. The fourth ant jumps towards the masked girl. Shizu leaps in the air, killing the ant, then the fifth behind it before landing. She runs and cuts seventh across its chest. Then she leaps again and stabs the final one in the head. Erin, Kaval and Guido can't help but watch with amazement to what they just witnessed. Erin. W wow. Erin see a giant ants twitching at an antenna. Erin. Shizu-san, that's still one. Erin tries to warn her the ant stand its feet attack Shizu. The masked swordswoman gets into a fighting stance, but something strange happens to her, and she falls to her knees. Erin. Shizu-san. Demon movement Debus finish. Unexpectedly, a flying object headed straight towards the ant, and it was then slice into pieces and explode. Explosion also caused Shizu's mask to blowing off. Eren and the others quickly check on her. Eren. Shizu-san are you okay? Shizu. Why yes. Ido. What the heck was that? Havel. I have no idea what was that attack. The group were then alerted when they heard footsteps coming their way. They all turn and that's where they saw him. Ido. Who the heck is that? Eren. 
I have no idea but whoever that guy is he looks intimidating. Havel. Is he a friend or a foe? Hope he's not my enemy. They all got worry, not sure if this person is considered as an ally or foe. The unknown person who is Remuru in disguise slowly walk up to them, but then stop of noticing Shizu's mask on the ground. He picked it up and handed it over Shizu. Alan Remuru I believe this is yours miss. He spoke in a deep but soft tone of voice. It's took Shizu to understand that this person is being generous of returning her mask. She took her mask and smiled at him. Shizu? Yes, thank you. He had a good look on Shizu, the other three adventurers would have seen his expression if it weren't for him wearing his helmet that was conceal his face of a look of disbelief upon seeing Shizu's facial structure. Alan Remuru, so, what Seal told me about this person in front of me is true. Now I have to make the difficult decision, and that's decide the fate of Shizu Izawa. Time skip brought to you by, I brought the adventurers and Shizu back to the village. They were starving so they were given food to eat. While they were eating I was outside, still wearing my disguise. Rigard and Tiamat were next to me, both looking at me with questionable looks. Rigard. Um, forgive me for asking Lord Remuru, but why are you wearing that? Tiamat. I also want to know as well, why are you wearing that suit, darling? Alan Remuru, uh, well you see I'm just wearing this as a disguise as well changing my voice to keep my identity a secret from the humans, as you remember the incident back from Dwargan, Tiamat. She thought about it and she does indeed remember. Alan Remuru, anyways, what are our guests up to, Rigard? Rigard? Well. Havel. Hey, damn it I wanted that meat, Erin. What a jerk I raised that meat, you know, Vito. Listen, man I won't yield when it comes to food, we can hear the three adventurers fighting over food like a pack of hyenas. Tiamat. What the hell is wrong with those three? Alan Remuru, they're just that hungry like they haven't eaten anything for months. Rigard. I'm sorry they said they were starving, so I gave them food. Alan Remuru, it's fine Rigard, don't be too hard on yourself. Tiamat. What's important helping those in need is a good thing. Rigard. Yes, Remuru Sama, Tiamat Sama thank you very much I hope to dedicate myself to doing just that. Alan Remuru, good, good. Rigor. Remuru Sama, Tiamat Sama, go on in. Said Rigor as he opened the curtain for us to enter the hut, seeing the humans were vigorously eating food. Alan Remuru Tiamat. Pig. I look at the direction of the mask girl, Shizu, and to my surprise, she ate the piece of meat with her mask still on. Alan Remuru, she can eat with her mask on interesting skills she got, I should probably learn this myself. Rigard. Guests, I'm fear we hear little to offer, but are you comfortable here? Allow me to make the introductions. These are our masters, Remuru-sama, Tiamat-sama, Iringido Kaval. Masters. Alan Remuru, got a problem with that. Havel. Fira, uh, no. Iren. Fear we knew you weren't an ordinary human or at least we think you are as well the fact you both are ruling a village of monsters is quite a surprise. The trio of adventurers introduce themselves as well as Shizu. Erin is secretly an elf from the sorcerer's dynasty Sarian, and her two party members are her bodyguards, how I know about this was thanks to Seal from analyzing them. The trio explained they were here at the request of the guildmaster of the kingdom of Blumand, one of the nation bordering the great Jura forest. They were asked to investigate the area because of Valdora's disappearance. Alan Remuru, speaking about my brother Valdora, wonder what he's up to right now with his roommate. Meanwhile in the imaginary space. Right now, Baldor is chilling with his new friend Lapless Darkness or her true identity known for from the DXD universe, the Trahixa. The Storm Dragon and the Apocalyptic Beast both were in the middle of a game of Shogi, which to Vildora liking as he's been playing the game with her about a couple hours, have not once lost a match. Vildora. Kuahaha this game of Shogi is really fun I must say, I am becoming really good at Shogi, that I'm probably in the master level no, since I'm the Storm Dragon, I've reached the Ryua level. Trahixa. Deadpan ya. Good for you. Baldora. So, how about it? Wanna go for another round? Trahiksa. I think I'll pass. We've been playing over an hour and I'm starting to get bored of it. Baldora. Oh come on, one round wouldn't hurt. Or are you, the apocalyptic beast is afraid to challenge me, the great storm dragon Vildora Tempest. I bet you have the same feeling of fear when you were defeated by the god of the bible. Hearing this, Trahiksa gained a smug smile, and I had a cocky attitude as well she was leaking a bit of her power. Trahiksa. Huh? Who says I'm afraid of you? I fear no one especially the foolish god of the bible, and I'm glad karma got to that bastard, you wanna go for a round. You're on and once I beat you. She pointed at him and said these words full with confidence and pride. Trahiksa. I will send you to Jesus, the conqueror of flames and Shizu's will, Ermuru's pav. After the trio of adventurers and Shizu finished their meal I allowed them to stay the night. Shizu went to the cliff and looking at the sunset. I approached her from behind without her noticing, still wearing my disguise. Alan Remuru, beautiful sight isn't it? She turned her head around to see me. Shizu. Oh, hello Remuru. 
It is indeed a beautiful sight, even more beautiful when it shines over your village. Alan Ramuru, I'm glad you like it. Both became silent for a moment, continuing looking at the beautiful horizon that shines over them. Alan Ramuru, I'd like to ask you something. You're from Japan aren't you? Shizu hearing his question turned to him, and you might not see it because of her wearing her mask, she shone a shock expression. Shizu. H how did you know? Alan Ramuru, it was pretty obvious at first glance, seeing you using the chopsticks the way how a Japanese person use it to eat, and unlike those three companions of yours that don't know how to use it, you seem to be a professional of using them. That's how I figure out your otherworlder from Japan. Shizu. E. Ramuru san are you Japanese as well? Alan Ramuru, oh no, no I'm not. I had visited Japan a couple of times at my travels of crossing worlds as well some of my closest friends are from Japan, and my daughters were born from there. Shizu. I I see so he can travel through world does that mean his wife can also do the same? She removes her mask and smile, a smile that is very familiar to Ramuru upon seeing her face. Ramuru was silent for a moment of seeing Shizu's face a second time. Not wanting to make things awkward he asked her a question. Alan Ramuru, how did you get here Shizu? She stopped smiling and she looks sad. Shizu. I'm a summon. Alan Ramuru, so, when were you summoned here? Shizu. A long time ago. My town was burning engulfed in flames. Alan Ramuru, a war. She nod. Alan Ramuru, if I had to guess, she was summoned round the time World War II, one of the foolish human warriors that cost so many deaths of lives. Shizu. Bombs fell from the sky my mother I fled together, but then. Alan Ramuru, what happened to your mother? She lowers her head with no response. Alan Ramuru, I'm sorry I ask. Shizu. It's okay. Alan Ramuru, I can understand the loss of a family member I lost my brother, as he sadly passed away a long time ago, this was something recently I found out when I returned back to this world. He spoke in a sadly low tone. This made Shizu feel very bad for him. Shizu. I'm so sorry for your loss. Alan Ramuru, it's quite alright. Finding out about his death was really hard to believe. But I still have my other siblings, my two sisters and my other brother who's the youngest of the family, and I'm happy they're okay. They didn't say anything for the moment, but Shizu is happy for Ramuru still having his other siblings around. Alan Ramuru, hey, I know I'll show you something fun. This got her attention and she looks at him confused. Ramuru then shows his memories for Shizu to see. She looks at her new surroundings, and she's surprised where they are now. Shizu. This place, it looks like an adventurer guild, but why are you showing me this? Alan Ramuru, wait, what? He looks at the place, and it is indeed an adventurer guild, but he suddenly recognized this place, and he didn't want to stay here for long before they will show up. You idiot you spend all our money again. Shizu. Huh. Alan Ramuru, oh no. Turning where the source of the voice came from, Ramuru and Shizu saw four individuals people much to Ramuru displeased seeing those guys again. The Kwa. Kazuma please give me back my booze. Kazuma. Hell no, you pay a lot of money buying this expensive alcohol, and I do not want to return being broke again because of you, you useless goddess. The Kwa. Just a sip, just give me one sip, so I can savor the taste of that expensive alcohol, I haven't even got a drink of it for a month, cause you've been saving our money expenses. She tried to reach out to grab the alcohol from Kazuma's hand, but he prevented that by pushing her face away. Kazuma. Not a chance. I am selling this to the pawn shop to get our money back. The Kwa. No I need it, I need it I can't live without it, Megumin. You're seriously causing a scene, Aqua. Just let Kazuma sell it or else you're just gonna make things worse for us. Besides, I've been itching of wanted to use my explosion magic so badly. Darkness. Kazuma if you want to release stress you can use me as your punching bag, Kazuma. Can you shut up already you damn messages night, Darkness. Ooh, both Rimuru and Shizu sweat drop upon seeing Darkness sudden reaction. Rimuru facepumped himself for showing this to Shizu. Alan Ramuru, sweat drop sorry you had to see that. This is not what I wanted to show you. Shizu. It's fine. Just who were those people? Alan Ramuru, they're just old acquaintances nothing more, nothing less. Pretend you never saw of all that. Look at this one. He shows Shizu the thriving and bustling cities Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and the rest of country years after the atomic bombings. Shizu. Wow it's like the like skyscrapers of New York that I saw on picture postcard once. Alan Ramuru, after the war ended, peace came to Japan. The towns and economy all boomed. Shizu. I see I'm so glad. I wish I could have shown this to my mother. Alan Ramuru, I want to make this one where everyone in my family can live in peace, too. Shizu. That's wonderful. I hope that really happens. Alan Ramuru, it will I'm sure of it as my bone buddy Ains once said, if I can bring happiness to the ones I treasure, I don't care about what happens to anyone else. Shizu was confused of the nickname Ramuru give his old friend Ains, never knowing he's a literal undead skeleton. But she laughs softly, then she suddenly cough and grabs her chest. 
Alan Rimuru, Shizu, Shizu. I'm sorry. Alan Rimuru, are you okay? Shizu. Yes, I think so. She then gets back up and and places her mask back to her face. Heijin. Hey, Rimuru got a minute. He turned to see Keijin calling me. Heijin. We'd like to talk to you about where to build a new house. Alan Rimuru, sure, I'll be right there. He tell him and then look back at Shizu. Alan Rimuru, see you later, Shizu-chan. And take care of yourself. Shizu. I will. See you. Night time, Rimuru, now not wearing his disguise, already put his daughters asleep and is laying in bed thinking about today, of encountering the three adventurers and Shizu. He placed his hand on his head letting out a sigh as he still remembered the conversation he had with Seal before he met Shizu. Flashback, Rimuru. Seal, are you telling me that you want me to let Shizu die? Seal. Master I'm sorry to say but yes, you have to let her go. Rimuru. But why? Seal. Cannot answer. Rimuru. Seal. He shouts at Seal wanted to get a straight answer from her. Seal. If you prevent Shizu Izawa's death a canon event will occur and possibly destroy this world. Hearing this, Rimuru has nowhere to say. Seal. Also master, I advise you don't show her what you look like. Rimuru. Confuse and why not? Seal. It may cause complications. You will understand once you see her face. You are both basically identical. Flashback end, Rimuru. So that's what she meant that she and I were basically identical because her facial features looks almost similar than mine. I don't understand why Shizu and I look similar. He was suddenly got out of his thoughts when he feels two pairs of arms wrapping around him. Turning to see Tiamat woken up and nuzzling on Rimuru's neck. Tiamat. You can't sleep can you? Is there something troubling you, darling? He doesn't know if he should tell her what Seal told him, but decided to keep that to himself. Rimuru. No. Nothing at all. I'm fine just not feeling sleepy. Tiamat. If that's so. Then. She got up from the bed and to Rimuru shock, Tiamat remove her nightgown and tossing them away, as she is completely naked in front of him. Tiamat. I want you to breed me and give me another child, since my mother's been asking for a grandchild, so let's give her one. Shaking out of his shock Rimuru smirks at Tiamat who returns with a smirky grin. Rimuru. Well since you insist, I wouldn't mind having a bit of fun with you. And yeah your mother's been assisting us at having another child, so let's make her wish come true. Tiamat. Then come here already and impregnate me you magnificent hexy bastard. Rimuru. Okay. He leaned in close to Tiamat and the two share a passionate kiss and slowly push her down on the bed where they began their best passionate night together. Time skip. The morning came and today was the day Irin, Kaval, Gido and Shizu were leaving the village. They all got out of their tents and planning to leave, but then they noticed Shizu wasn't moving. The trio were confused then noticed Shizu started to stumble and lose balance, causing everyone to get worried at what's happening. Irin. Shizu-san. Shizu. Not again. She falls down on her knees and she screams at the top of her lungs. Her mask slowly started to crack and flames started to emerge over her body, as then the flame shoots into sky as dark cloud formed. Seal. Report. The fire spirit Ifrit is trying to take control over Shizu's body. Rimuru looks what is happening Shizu as he clenches his fist knowing what he must do. Alan Rimuru, Rigard, Rigor. Evacuate the others. Rigard. But. Rigor. Rimuru Sama. Alan Rimuru, that's an order. Rigard. Yes, sir as you wish. Rigard and Rigor leave. Alan Rimuru, Ranga. Ranga leap out from Rimuru's shadow. Ranga. Yes master. Alan Rimuru, take those three adventurers with the other that are evacuating. Ranga. As you wish master. The trio saw Shizu is levitating and looking menacingly want to help her somehow, but Rimuru forcefully teleport them on Ranga's back and ran with where all the goblins evacuate. Alan Rimuru, Tiamat, take Falfa and Shalsha as well, while I'll handle this on my own. Tiamat nodded and immediately took the twins with her. As they left the flames swirl around Shizu and transforms her into the fire spirit. Alan Rimuru, so you're the fire spirit Ifrit huh? Ifrit? Ifrit didn't reply instead he shoots a fireball Rimuru. Instead of dodging it Rimuru slapped the fireball away and he instantly disappeared, but then to Ifrit's surprise Rimuru appeared in front of him in a flash, grabbing him by the face and slammed him to the ground. Alan Rimuru, how very rude of you attacking me as you have no idea who you're dealing with. But since I'm nice guy I'm not going to kill you, instead I'm gonna send you to my imaginary space, where two individual that are living there will decide what they would do to you. Before Ifrit could know what happens next he was already consumed. Soon after that, the skies clear and an unconscious Shizu was laying on the ground. In the imaginary space, Ifrit, confused, looks around the mysterious and empty place. He shoots a blast of in one direction. Then out of nowhere he heard a moronic laugh. Trihiksa. Oh ho ho Out of the dark mist came Trihiksa looking at Ifrit and having an evil smirk on her face. Trihiksa. Oh look master brought a new toy for us to play with. Eldora. You might as well give up, Ifrit. 
Ifrit heard another voice, but he was shocked of what was standing behind Trahiksa is the storm dragon himself Eldora. Eldora. You cannot break out of this place. You are no match for Remuru. He is my big brother. I am the storm dragon, Baldora Tempest. Trahiksa. And I am Lapless Darkness, but I'm known for as the apocalyptic beast, Trahiksa. Baldora Trahiksa. It would be our pleasure to face you. Back with Remuru. After the issue with Ifrit was over and everyone came back to the village, Remuru was sitting beside Shizu who lays in bed resting. Hal and Remuru, how are you feeling Shizu-san? Shizu. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry I couldn't control myself when Ifrit took over my body. I tried to stop him for not letting him destroy this village you built but, Hal and Remuru, you don't have to apologize. No one got hurt and everyone is safe. What's important that you didn't cause any trouble and you did your best. Shizu. Remuru-san would you mind listening to my story? I want people to remember my story and know that I lived. Hal and Remuru, of course. I listened to your story. Shizu began telling her story from the beginning. She was summoned to this world by a demon lord and was possessed by Ifrit right after she was summoned, then she ended up killing her friend named Perino. After her friend died, she continued serving the demon lord, but that was until she met the hero who took her in when she was abandoned and left behind from the demon lord's castle. The hero was the one who gave her the mask that would help her suppress Ifrit. She traveled with her, learning about this world and learned magic. Through the power of the mask, she learned to use Ifrit's power and use it to help others. That was when she became known as the Conqueror of Flames. Time passed and the hero disappeared, leaving Shizu behind. She didn't know why she did, but she remembered what the hero said, I'm certain we'll meet again. She decided to become stronger, helping people who were suffering. She then became a teacher in the kingdom of Ingratia. The kids from the school were otherworlder just like her, and they have taught her the modern culture of video games and manga. Ermuru been listening to Shizu's story, not interrupting her from telling everything about her past. He felt pity for her, how she was abandoned then was saved, but later that same person who took her and left her all alone. That hero reminded him of himself when he left his siblings behind all those years ago, while they defended themselves in this world alone, which resulted one of them being dead from his absence of not knowing his brother Veldanava's death, Shizu. Hey, Remuru-san, can I see your face? The question Shizu asked completely got Remuru off guard. Shizu. I never got to see your face. I'm just curious what you look like under the mask. This made Remuru hesitant if he should show her his face and how she reacts. Seal. It is fine for you to show her your face, master. No one else is here so it's alright. Hearing Seal giving him the okay Remuru prepare himself to reveal face to Shizu. Hal and Remuru, alright, I'll show you what I look like. But I must warn you, you will be shocked once you see my face, and um, Shizu. It's fine. I won't judge what you look like. I'm ready for what's to come. Hal and Remuru, alright, here goes. The blue spandex suit disguise vanish in front of Shizu's eyes in his place was Remuru. To Shizu's shock upon seeing Remuru who has similar face but hundred times beautiful than hers, she was lost for words. Shizu. H how is this possible that you look like just me? Remuru. I don't know either but could be some coincidence that we look alike. Shizu was still a bit of shock, but she had a warm weak smile on her face. Shizu. Yeah, it could be a coincidence. Maybe we were destined to meet each other. Seeing you make me feel like finding a missing piece of me. Remuru. Yeah, I kind of feel that too. Remuru held his chest where his heart is at, as if seeing Shizu from this very moment makes him feel some nostalgia, but he doesn't know why is that. Remuru. Shizu, about that demon lord. What's his name? Shizu. Leon Cromwell. Remuru. Leon Cromwell. Shizu. One of the most powerful demon lords. Remuru. What did you want to find out from him? Shizu. I just wanted him to acknowledge that I, this human, had existed perhaps. And if those kids could be saved and returned to their world. Remuru place a hand on top hers. Remuru. I swear in the name of Remuru Tempest that I will make certain the demon lord Leon Cromwell hears yours wishes, even if I have to punch him, then I'll do so. Shizu. Thank you. After her thank you, Shizu Izawa was gone, but not without the final word that Remuru clearly didn't hurt her say. Shizu. Slime San. Remuru eyes were covered by his hair, shed tears fall from down his face. He extended his hand towards Shizu's body ready to consume her, but. Seal. Master if you do not want to do this then I have an alternate solution. Remuru. Shocked really. Seal. Yes. Take her soul from her body and please it within you so it will not disappear. Remuru. But I can revive her, why can I just do that? Seal. You can revive her, but not now. When right the time comes for you to revive her, you know what to do. Remuru. And when will that time come? Seal. I cannot say any further. You will have to figure it out for yourself.
didn't want to question any further Rimuru decided to follow Seal's instruction, removing the soul from the body as Shizu's soul floated towards Rimuru, looks down to the soul that is being held in his hands. As he looks down through the soul he can see a glimpse on Shizu wandering in an unknown place. She looks behind herself and sees two shadowing beings that are familiar to her. She runs towards them. Shizu. There you are please don't leave me behind again. As Shizu gets closer, the taller figure points to her left Shizu's right, and they both disappear. Shizu looks to her right and sees her mother. She starts running her towards, her body changing from an adult back to her kid self. When she reaches her mother, the two share an eternal embrace. Seeing this reunion between mother and daughter made Rimuru feel happy for her. Rimuru. At least she got to see her mother again. I'm glad for her. I promise you, Shizu I'll make your wish come true, and if Demon Lord Leon Cromwell refuse to hear your wishes, then I will use force by my title as Void Dragon to make him acknowledge your wishes. Rimuru placed the soul on his chest as it absorbed within its body where it will be kept safe. Side story. The chaos creator and the birth of a new generation. Day before Rimuru arrived to the DXD world. On the vast field there was a battle that took place. Armies of many nations took part on this battle to defeat a common enemy who came in their world. Hundreds upon thousands of the army forces all let out a battle cry and rush forward, pointing their weapons to kill their enemy, but how foolish they were, before they even know where they all ended up dying from the intense deadliest aura the one enemy they were supposed to kill. Piles of dead corpses were all around, no one was spared, there was nothing but death everywhere. Among the pile of corpses, there was one survivor that looks at the bodies of his dead comrades, and having a look of absolute fear at the one who caused all of this who is staring directly at, having an evil wicked grin on his face. Rimuru is wearing the outfit he wore from the prologue when meeting Tiamat. Rimuru began walking towards the living soldier while crushing the skulls of the fallen enemies he had killed, each step he took, plus the sound of bones crushing, made the soldier even more terrified and wanted to run for his life, but couldn't, cause he was paralyzed in fear and overwhelmed from the aura of death. Soldier. S stay back don't co come any closer why you monster. In a blink of an eyes Rimuru was already in front of him and holding the man's neck, struggling to breathe of being choked by the void dragon chaos creator, immense force of grip. Rimuru. Chuckle haha funny. Being called a monster which I am, but it is your nation's leaders who are the true monsters after finding out some hidden dirty secrets that had kept hidden from the public, not to find out the truth. The expression on Rimuru's face darken as well as his tone. Rimuru. A bunch of disgusting, despicable aristocrats that enjoys toying with the innocents, doing some unspeakable things with these harsh and terrible treatments to man, woman and even children. Children your foolish king that you serve along with the church are a bunch of pedophiles, and in a fit of my wrath, I'm going to kill you foolish humans, and you should all perish along with your beliefs. Soldier. P please ha have mercy. Rimuru. Sorry, I'm out of mercy. Before Rimuru can end the man's life, Seal quickly alerted him. Seal. Master the faker has arrived. This put him a halt of killing the soldier as he sensed an incoming visitor coming his way here. Rimuru. So he finally come to challenge me, about bucking time. Above the sky something came down and crashed on the ground, causing a large crater. What stood in place on the crater was a young man wearing a black trench cloak with two swords black and white in both hands. Upon seeing the arrival of the newcomer the soldier started to laugh. Soldier. Ha 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 you're done for now monster the black swordsman has arrived to slay you, and he shall make you beg for myrrh. The man's sentence was cut when his neck was broken, then Rimuru throw the dead soldier's body towards the stranger who sliced the body in half with one of his swords, not showing a guilt of regret of what he has done, as he wipes the blood from his blade. Swordsman. Look what you made me do some of this filthy blood got over me, it's disgusting. The swordsman pointed his sword to Rimuru's direction. Karuto. I am the hero of this world, the dual-wielding black knight, Karuto and I have come to put an end of your tyranny demon, he said, as this guy who proclaimed himself to be a hero thinks he'd intimidated Rimuru, but in reality he's not the slightest as that should be the other way around, this hero should be the one being intimidated by him, as he's someone that shouldn't be messed with. Rimuru, decided to play along until he shatters this hero's reality. Rimuru. So you're the hero everyone's been talking about, huh? This gained the dual-wielding swordsman a grin on his face. Gerudo. That's right, you should be afraid of me, trembling before my feet of the power I hold that was bestowed to me by the goddess who sent me to this world to defeat the demon lord's army and demon lord. You should be honored to be at my present and being slayed by me, but if you do beg for your life you can become into one of my slaves, I am a merciful hero after all. Rimuru. This guy is so full of himself, isn't he? Seal. He certainly is master. You should make him know his place of who he is speaking of, and then torture him, make him feel pain in any possible way. I would like to see the look of despair on his face when he begs you for forgiveness. Rimuru. You certainly have become a sadist since we've been traveling across worlds for quite some time, haven't you Seal? Seal. It's just your imagination. 
Rimuru, and there she goes again with her usual lines. Anyways Rimuru looks at the self-proclaimed hero with a stern look. Rimuru. I refuse. He flat out refused his offer which Karuto didn't take those words too well from the answer he was given of being refused by anyone. Karuto. Poor choice of words. No one gets to define my words after offering a choice of becoming my slave, whatever might as well just kill you anyways. He suddenly vanish from sight, then reappear in front of Rimuru, about to swing his blade as before it was about to land, but to the swordsman's surprise the white blade he was holding shattered into pieces, upon making contact with Rimuru's skin as he seems unfazed, nor there wasn't even a scratch on him. Rimuru. What's that supposed to hurt me? I didn't felt anything. That sword of yours did absolutely no damage to me, must be because it's weak probably the other one is the same. Karuto. That's not possible those swords that were given to me were blessed by the goddess, and they shouldn't break that easily. Rimuru. Ah, you must be talking about that narcissistic goddess I've already got rid of, as she was quite troublesome when reincarnating people that she views are ugly, get sent to a terrible world with skills that would not help them to survive and end up dead, while others with good looks like you get special treatment. He began approaching the him as Karuto took a step back out of fear. Karuto. Why you're lying there is no way the goddess can't be killed, you're just making up a lie to make me fear you, that has to be it. Rimuru continue walking as Karuto point his other sword at him. Karuto. Step back I'm warning you, otherwise I will use my special move Starburst Stream to cut you to pieces. That's where Rimuru stopped making Karuto think he made him scared of mentioning special move, but what came next was something he wasn't expecting. Karuto. What the hell? Why are you suddenly laughing? Rimuru. Haha oh man, sorry it's just because what you said was hilarious. Karuto. What is? Rimuru. You say you were gonna use your special move Starburst Stream, I find it funny that you can really use that move, good joke man, good joke. Karuto. I wasn't bucking joking I can literally use that sword skills, and I have used it to defeat the boss of the 74th floor. Rimuru. Wait, you're serious. He nods. Rimuru. Oh. Let me laugh harder. Ha 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 ha. Feeling very insulted from being laughed at it drive Karuto to be beyond pissed as he dashed forward, moved with speeds beyond human comprehension, being cocky and feeling confidently of defeating Rimuru. But the feeling of confidence soon disappeared when he suddenly stopped from moving so fast, the tip of his sword was being held by Rimuru using his two fingers, and the expression on his face as well be aura he's releasing was absolute terrifying, making anyone close by to run. Rimuru. I was in a good mood and now. Rimuru. You bucking ruined it. Fear was all written in Karuto's face. His instincts were telling him to run. Out of desperation he lets go of his sword and ran off. He then leap up towards the sky and began flying out of here like a coward. Rimuru. Fool, retreating is futile he'll never get away from me. Seal. Would you like to use ultimate skill? King of Heroes Gilgamesh sub skill gate of Babylon yes no. Rimuru. Oh I totally forgot I have that recently new skill you made for me. Yes. Several weapons were summoned around Rimuru before he motioned them to take aim at Karuto, who had not noticed the multiple weapons that were coming at him. As Karuto thinks he got away from Rimuru, he suddenly felt his body being pierced from the multiple weapons, causing him to cry out in pain, and began to fall, while more weapons continued to pierce all over his body, till he crashed on the ground, causing a large crater where he lays down. Blood leaks everywhere throughout his body as well with the multiple weapons all around him. Karuto. Ak it hurts my whole body hurts in so much bucking pain. Rimuru. Good to know you're in pain cause you deserve to endure this great suffering you're feeling right now, fake Karuto. Upon hearing that name Karuto slowly looks up Rimuru with a bewildered shock look. Karuto. Ho oh, how do you know that name? Rimuru. It's simple really, I've have went to your world before and heard about this character who's known for as the black swordsman Karuto from the Sanaim, you humans called Sword Art Online, I am well aware of other worlds existing, that's how I know his name. You're just a copycat of Karuto. You're completely inferior to him, and I have met plenty of people like you who tarnish his name. And true Rimuru had visit the world where the Sao characters exist, observe every event from the Anime, movies all the way to Elicization War of Underworld, just to learn some things in that world by observing and not getting involved in the event. Rimuru. You know what else those people as well as you all have in common. Gerudo. What? He leans closer to him with a sinister ear-to-ear -ear grin on his face. Rimuru. They all end up dead by me and you are next in my list. This caused the false hero to being in an absolute terror not wanted to die from the being in front of him. Karuto. No please no I'll confess I only did all these hero stuff just to get myself a harem even force myself on the girls without their consent I would even beat them if they wouldn't obey what I say. Rimuru. And these girls, how old were they? Karuto. Uh. T they we were. Rimuru. Answer the bucking questions I got damn it. Karuto. They w were 9 years of age. Rimuru. Rimuru did not say a word only just looking at him with a blank stare. 
Karuto was now scared, and he can feel the atmosphere is becoming very tense, the clouds started to darken as well, purple lightning began flashing everywhere, destroying everything even the dead bodies of soldiers, as there's no remains only ashes. Ermuru. You are a disgrace of human scum I have ever met, but I met much far worse than you, at least they no longer exist, nor they'll never be coming back to reincarnate at another world. He stared at him with a look that seems like he's staring at his soul. Ermuru which this will also be in your case, you will no longer exist neither no one would not remember you, even people in your past life will forget about you. In a quick instant grab a held of his face, squeezing it ever so tightly. Karuto. No 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 wait wait. Ermuru. Hakai. The false hero Karuto the dual wielding black knight was completely erased from existence and anyone that ever knew he has forgotten about him. After the deed was done Ramuru conjure a large summoning circle as it began to glow in a bride of purple mist. Black tendrils began coming out of summoning circle as the whole world began to shake violently for what's about to appear, while Rimuru began speaking in some sort of ancient language. Rimuru. You alone drnlll stand soth itself, ahi agad outer relahar you hag lel im goriat wicked e at im tinkorna. Devoured nilgri, don't ngahi ahi one llll wicked aura survive. Out from the purple mist a creature made itself known from the world, and it's releasing a miasma that will drive anyone into madness. Looking at the creature that's been summoned Ramuru gave it an order. Ramuru. Now, devour the many souls of this world until you are satisfied and return back home Azathoth. While letting Azathoth to be roaming free as he's so pleased of devouring many souls, Ramuru planned to leave this world by opening a portal, before Seal spoke to him. Seal. Was it really okay allowing that world to fall? He paused for a moment and eventually answer her. Ramuru. This world was already doomed from the start after seeing the horrific things it was best to just let it die. Even if I step in to try fixing everything humans would just be humans. This will be their punishment as well as the consequences of their actions for all the evil deeds they have done and what they deserve chaos, after all. He walks through the portal as he began to close before he said as it starts to close behind him before he said. Ermuru. I am the chaos creator. One year later in the world of DXD. At the Kuo hospital Tiamat is at the middle of giving birth as I couldn't help but be excited that I soon gonna be a father. I was at the waiting room wearing a business suit just to blame in with the humans, mostly to wear it as to not be misunderstood as a woman because of my appearance. Ramuru. Oh god oh god, oh god, oh god it's really happening I really can't hold my excitement, I'm going to be a dad, and I'm not only gonna have one child but twins. Seal. You must calm yourself master people are watching you. Ramuru. Oh right my bad I really couldn't help it. I'm just really happy that I'm gonna be a father, and I wondered this is how Nafumi, Subaru and Anos felt when they became parents. One of these days I will visit them and introduce my kids to their kids. Nurse. Excuse me is there Mr. Tempest. I stood up to my seat letting the nurse know it's me. Ramuru. I am Mr. Tempest, Ramuru Tempest. May I see my wife, Tiamat. Nurse. You may see her, follow me. I followed the nurse as she led me to a room where Tiamat is at. The nurse opened the door for me, and I went in the room I saw and went to side Tiamat who is in a hospital bed. The nurse left the room leaving us alone as I was focusing on the two newborns babies girls that are being holding of the arms of Tiamat. Tiamat. Look at our daughters darling, are they beautiful? Ermuru. Yes, they are. They're so innocent and so small that I want to protect them from all the evil in the world. They gave each other a kiss and then both kissed the foreheads of their newborn daughters, Falfa and Shalsha. Ermuru. I swear as the void dragon and chaos creator, I will always protect my daughters and my family, and if anyone lays a hand on them, they shall meet a gruesome death that not even the gods can save them from my wrath that has no limitation. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.